<laughs> After I, I sort of uh, went to the gaming, I did a search on the hacker space. I realized gaming has actually done something similar. And it's basically because of the repair code uh, One thing with the repair code sometimes they bring in devices that are not safe. So <laughs> plug in here, you clip the whole thing. So gaming has actually done something to protect the circuit. And what a problem. This is actually a standalone circuit breaker. You can have it in this way, where you can plug things in there, or you actually have it as a clipping plug and the wire draining out. Uh, in the hospital, all our house cleaning equipment has actually uh, trailing wire. And the reason for doing that, sometimes when they plug in their vacuum cleaner, you trip the thing. If you're in ICU, you trip the thing. Oh, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> We had actually an incident where one of the devices actually tripped the, the circuit breaker in the ICU. And that patient was on a respirator with some other equipment. Problem is, that room is closed because that patient is a burn patient. So when the alarm went off, nobody heard it. And one nurse was walking by and heard a very thin alarm. So she thought she was dreaming and she kind of walked back to take a look. That patient, the room has tripped, the patient's respirator has shut off. Quickly, went to call the doctor. Two doctors, one doing the pumping, the other one doing the bagging. And they got the facilities people to come to reset the thing. It took them about 10 minutes. Came, they didn't know where it's a breaker. <laughs> so, so and the third around, so I know it's about almost 20 minutes before they could get the power back. The doctor who was doing that pumping was already half in. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so one thing about the, the electrical safety, it can be quite dangerous in the hospital environment because many times patients cannot tell you I'm in trouble. Mm. Even for us, normal people, if you get shot, you shout. Sometimes a breaker trip, sometimes you don't, but most times you can run away. If any one of you want to try, I've got a setup here. He'll <laughs> <laughs> give you a simulated spike. He will not kill you, but it is close enough to getting a very short thing before the breaker trip. Okay. So this setup is a very simple setup, which I did it in about 15-20 minutes. I should take my laptop away from it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so let's get into it. Okay, one of the things that Gaming mentioned the last time when he stopped, the, the 30 mA, 10 mA, where did all that number come from? Did somebody kind of pluck that number from the air and say, you know, 13 million pay is okay, 10 million pay? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's because after World War II, they want to save money on materials. So the UK system is higher work, uh, amperage than anywhere else. But the plugs are also mm -hmm. people strong. La. Okay, that one goes back to why we actually have what we have. It actually goes even further back to that. We actually go back to the Tesla versus uh, DC versus AC. Mm. And this started first with the DC. Mm. With DC, DC is a very lossy system because it's very hard to transform the voltage up and down. So whatever voltage you need, you have to step up a bit more and then give it to the house with that loss. And because of that, every few hundred meters, you need a generator. And Edison was prepared to build thousands and thousands of generators all over the place. That's why saying that's stupid. I just need one big generator, boost the voltage up, I can transmit anywhere I want. And second thing they realized, single phase is very inefficient. <coughs> single phase, you need minimum two wires. So if every house I give you a single phase, I need a lot of wires. So they did an experiment, they found two phase is actually more efficient. To send two wires, uh, two lines out, I need three lines. So I save one line. Some jokers are saying, if two phase is more efficient, why not three phase? <laughs> so they put three phase and they realize they actually get 30% savings in terms of the energy transmission and also the wire. With three phase, you only need four wires. So instead of six wires, you need four wires, a lot of save. So most of you are saying, you know, four wires, six wires, what's the big deal? It's a big deal because you're talking about millions of, of kilometers of wires. So when you multiply out, it's a lot of money. 
maintainer of soil is also much easier to maintain with less fire. Sure. Another joker was thinking, actually, we don't need a default fire. The neutral wire, we don't need. <laughs> but that is only when you have a three-phase generator with three-phase uh, supply, uh, soft load. Both are balanced, nothing goes through your neutral line. But if any one of the three phase are not balanced, some current will flow through the neutral line. If the current doesn't flow through a neutral line, your voltages all get haywire. So in the HDB block, coming into the block is three phase. But going to your apartment is single phase. So what they do with the, the neutral line, at the power station, they actually earth the, the line. So any leakage current, any excess current or any imbalanced current actually goes down to the earth rather than neutral line. But in case your earth line gets broken, they still have one thin neutral line. They don't have to have a thick one. And because they are earthing that neutral line, that is where we start having power. Now your, your lifeline has a ground reference. Okay, I give you a demonstration. <laughs> okay, this one, do you think it's safe? Anyone? Safe? Not safe. This bring it funny. Look fancy. Why is it not safe? Anything that's not look fancy. Okay, I give you a, this one here. I give you a proof of why it's safe or unsafe. Uh, can you bring down the light? Otherwise, it's right. Okay, if you can see, the neon light is actually lit. Uh, so when this is lit, it's not safe. So current is actually flowing through a neon light, going to my body down. If I put to earth, nothing happens. If I put to neutral, nothing happens. Because neutral, if you actually open up that breaker box, neutral is actually shorted to earth in the breaker box. So neutral and Earth is safe, life is not safe because life is reference to Earth. But neutral is actually shorted at that thing, so neutral has a uh, reference now to that. Okay, another incident, real incident again, hospital. We have a hospital bed, somebody actually say the bed is giving them a shock. We have some medical equipment connected near the bed. So our facility guy says our equipment caused a shock. <coughs> We took the equipment out, checked, the equipment was okay. We took the bed out, we checked the bed, also okay. So I told my colleague, since the bed is okay, the equipment is okay, the only thing is the power point. He says, cannot be. If the power point is the culprit, there will be more shocks. So I say, everything that we have excluded beyond that point, we have excluded. So the only thing left is the power point. He still insists, now I say, okay, never mind. You say whatever, put the body open up and check. Mm. Rather than opening up, one other simple way to do it. This is what we call a socket test tester. <coughs> the way this is wired, if all three lights are lit, mm. this point is actually properly wired. Mm. Any other combination, that means there is a problem with the wiring inside there. Mm. With the exception of your neutral and earth being switched around. Mm. <coughs> Why you cannot detect neutral and earth being switched around? It's shorter there. Mm. So this is not smart enough to know that your uh, neutral and earth are reversed. Is the neutral and earth supposed to be shorter together? Yeah, not here. I mean, it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be shorter. Okay. Because your neutral actually is, your earth is actually your standby path for your neutral. They call it protecting earth, not because of that, but because of this side here. Here, the current is supposed to flow through your neutral, but in case it doesn't, it go somewhere else. Where is the only other place it can go? It's down to Earth. So whatever path that you can find to Earth, you'll try to find the path to Earth. So this one, I have broken one open. This is the important piece. <laughs> okay, that piece is actually the tested part of it. <laughs> so this is a breaker. If you look at the thing, the light and neutral actually goes through this coil here. That is a current coil. 
the basic principle of electricity, anything that goes through one line must come or go from the source must come back to the source. If it doesn't come back from the source, it's leak. So whatever comes from life, theoretically must go back to neutral. If it doesn't go to neutral, that means it has leaked somewhere else, which means to a body, to a uh, something that has a uh, uh. Okay. Again. 10 milliam, 30 milliam, 100 milliam, or whatever you want, how did they get that number? <coughs> Fatalities, right? Fatalities has happened for a long time, but nobody <laughs> knows. <laughs> <laughs> so the question people always ask, what actually kills? So you actually need to do actual experiment. <laughs> Initially, they did with animals. Okay, the first part they did with animals. Animals cannot tell you I'm feeling pain or what, you just see, they run away. <laughs> So after Second World War, they actually did human experiments. How did they do the human experiments? Started with cadavers. So cadaver when they jump, that means you know it's too high. But when the cadaver feels pain, the cadaver will not do anything. So they actually recruited the Marine, US Marine uh, as volunteers. <laughs> they actually get shocked, they not to the point of death, but when they get feel pain, they'll tell you if you feel pain. So you need live volunteers to do that. Oh. Which is why you find that actually that particular standard they are using, since 1979 has not been uh, updated. <laughs> <laughs> Even if they want to update it, not, they, they are volunteers. Seriously, they are volunteers, but they cannot do it for ethical reasons. Mm. So that standard can never be updated unless it's done in Asia. <laughs> Ask me, in Asia we do a lot of strange experiments just the way. So the standard actually came from volunteers. At 5 milliampere, that is oh sorry, at 1 milliampere that is what they call the threshold of sensation. If you have 1 milliampere, you can just barely feel something. Most people will not. At 5 milliampere, you start feeling actually feeling tickling sensation. At 10, you start feeling a bit of pain. At 30, you guarantee feel pain. Long enough, it can kill. At 100, you are at the fatal zone. So there are, uh, there's a gradation. So 10 is actually quite safe. You feel something, you feel a bit of pain, but it will not kill you. Problem is 10, a lot of our devices are leaky, especially nowadays, because of one main reason. You want to guess one main reason why is our current devices so leaky? Switching mode power supply. Most switching mode power supplies are super leaky. If your hands are damp, you run through anything with a switching mode power supply, you start feeling the biting feeling. And the reason is very simple, it's because of the transformer. This is an isolation transformer. The normal switching mode power supply you will notice is actually quite big because you have the primary and secondary coil wrapped around each other. And why that is bad is because you have capacity coupling from the primary side to the second side. Electricity cannot be transmitted magnetically. So if you have a, the magnetic coupling, you find that you will not get a shock. But if you have capacity coupling, you still can get a shock. So with our normal cord transformer, primary wrap over secondary, the capacity coupling is actually quite big. So your, your ground reference actually gets capacitively coupled to your secondary side. So when you touch the secondary side, you still can feel a bit of biting, although it's a transformer. <coughs> okay, one last thing before I run away. <laughs> That's how you all say, this is not safe, right? Uh-oh. Anyone? Okay, this is. Yeah, this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyone there touch this hand? Ah, what is it? What is it? Oh, oh, it? Oh, I'm putting on the hot. Oh, no, the multimeter. What set up? What meter? What uh, meter? Yeah. Okay, I'll tell you that a bit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's one bigger than you. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I'm actually putting on the light in the to prove my point. Medical condition. I just have to make sure I don't touch the thing. 
Okay, it's live. It's painful because it's painful because of pain, not because of pain. Okay, why am I touching this and you don't have any problem? Okay. This one, as what the gentleman mentioned, there's a one mega ohm inside there and a neon light. One mega ohm, if you divide out, is 230 micro. It's not, remember that one, so it's just at the bare portion where you can just feel. Digital volt meter, minimum 20 mega ohms. So this is one, this is 20. This is much safer than that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't do this at home. Okay, one of the reason why I'm doing this here, one of the main reason I'm doing this here, because IoT, now a lot of people are connecting the thing to electrical appliances. So you have to be careful what you are dealing with. 